Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing the most consistent carry build on Nocturne Jungle right now, and that is not to play him as an assassin. In fact, that's the worst way to play him right now. You actually want to take him with Stridebreaker, even though it doesn't have Stridebreaker as a favorited item from Nocturne, which I think is absolutely crazy. It is in fact his highest win rate item in his top five build. It's pretty much all Stridebreaker across the board across the board gorge drinker is still decent it just doesn't give you the consistency stride breaker gets the slow front it lets you consistently land your autos fully stack your conqueror land your e fears super super useful if you want to take lethal tempo the best way to do it is with sunfire aegis sunfire aegis is a huge on hit item with its flame touch thus having the extra attack speed from lethal tempo is extremely useful so right now if you want to play nocturne the most efficient way you would want to take him with conqueror in this build instead with that being said sunfire lethal tempo nocturne is still really good especially if your team needs a front line to match the enemy front line in fact this game would have been a decent time to run it but i think we'll be fine with stride breaker as well it'll help us stay on top of the jinx and killer jinx doesn't have a true peel style support something that can enchant her and keep her alive it's just a pike so if i can build a lead we can definitely wipe out the jinx the only advantage Assassin Nocturne has over more of a Bruiser Nocturne is his initial impact for a second and a half of damage is a little bit higher, but his sustained damage and survivability is so much worse that it doesn't make up for it. Uh, biggest reason why recent patch gave everyone 70 extra health and it gave everyone extra armor and magic resist growth. So, I mean, it is what it is. The days of Assassin Nocturne have been over for a while. The dawn of kind of Shredder, Bruiser, Nocturne are upon us. It is fine by me. I've always preferred him more as a Shredder. Assassin is so hit or miss because even when Assassin items are good, if they have an Hourglass or something like that, it's super frustrating. There's not much you can do about it. Your full clear on Nocturne is healthy in terms of HP. You should be pretty much full HP by the time you finish. In terms of the time, it's a little bit faster than a Master Yi clear. You'll be finishing around 320 to 325, just barely faster than a Yi. Toppling looks kind of gankable. I'm going to push for a Scuttle. Belveth, she has some fast routes, but a lot of Belveth players, okay, yeah, she just took it right there. She took it so fast too. I feel like she smited it. I feel like she did a five camp into Scuttle. All right, that was uh, interesting. That had to be a panic flash. <laughs> oh man. Bot lane's looking very, very gankable. They're shoving all the way up. Even though it is just a two versus two, Jinx is missing enough HP to make this really favorable for us. Yeah, they're reacting though, it's warded. I'll go ahead and just continue the full clear. We're back where we started. We don't need to really reset for items since we're already here. We might as well stay. First item back, you're usually looking to get a heartbound axe. The extra mobility it gives is really nice. By no means is uh, Iron Spike Whip a bad item. It's just the uh, heartbound axe is a little bit better. Yeah, Belveth's top side. I could invade her bot side jungle right now. Get pretty good value out of that. It's very tempting. In fact, all right, I'm not gonna do it because I'd only have time to get her Raptors. If she goes bot side, she'll probably go to Krugs to do the full clear. And then, so I won't be able to take her Krugs from her. I'll just get Raps. I'd rather get my Raps, Krugs, and gank top. Because even if I put her behind, if I'm also putting myself behind in the process, even if she's more behind, it's not really worth. Nocturne's a big level six power spiker, so it's really all about him just like hitting six. That's when the game turns on for him. Otherwise, without your R, you have to come really deep up behind people, and if they have it warded, you can't really do anything, so. It's kind of where we're at. If you're always pushing a big wave, so most likely this won't be a gank. Unless set to something stupid. Like unless he tries to fight her in those minions, which is not that likely. 
Yeah, she has too many minions. She still has a full HP cannon. He knows he has to back off. So we'll just reset. We have our blue buff coming up. We have our boss side jungle is going to be up soon. Can go ahead and get heartbound and we'll grab boots. Grab boots control ward. It's pretty decent back. Bell Be Be Vest level five. She has more KP than me. She's had some pretty easy ganks, not going to lie. <laughs> Bell Vest ganks are one of the worst out of any junglers. They're so weak. She doesn't have really any consistent CC and she's not particularly fast in these early levels. That's all right though. We'll be hitting a swift level six. We're gonna smite it. Let the smite scrape the shield and then our Q lands. I'll get blue for six. This is a pre seven minute level six. That's actually pretty fast. I mean, yeah, pre seven minute level six. That's really, really good. Considering we haven't gotten a single kill. Generally, if you don't get a single kill or really leech and minion XP, you'll be hitting you around 7 minute 30. Alright, we can look to use it now. Even invade the Belveth, use our Ignite if need be. Or I have to go bot. That's fine. Get him with our fear. Gonna get my Ignite on him. Down he goes. We go ahead and go over there now. Jinx way overstayed. I don't think they're expecting me to hit six that fast. I, I <laughs> that was actually really early. Well, we got our red buff. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave. It was awkward. A lot of my attacks were ending up on the red buff instead of on her. She's gonna go mid. Since our R's down, we don't have to force anything. When your R's up, you need to look even closer for ganks because there's way more opportunities. It's kind of like if you're, uh, like when, you, when you're Nocturne not level six, you're so poor in terms of opportunities that uh, you can look and quickly know that, oh, I can't do anything anyways. But once you're level six, you yeah, really, really have to look. So like here sets full health on her turret. He's, he's almost gankable, he's almost diveable. Bot lane's definitely killable. Jinx no boots, no HP items. Jinx is so killable. But since I'm pathing this way, I'm not going to sweat it. I'm just going to wait till my R's up. That's what we need to make the magic happen anyways. If, if we don't put our fear on Velveth, she could definitely solo us. But if we fear her, we should be able to solo her. There's no reason why we shouldn't. We'll pit by the Xerath. Yeah, top's looking good. I'm liking what I'm seeing up there. Set's pushing a wave. His items aren't really that much more than mine. It's just like a ruby and a cloth armor. So like 700 gold. Oh no. Fior's doing it without me. Doesn't seem to be awarded. Go ahead and drop the art. We didn't use our W. Because, I don't know, I just didn't react in time. Plus, it anything that Set can throw out isn't going to really stop us. His only CC really pulls us to him, so it is what it is. But if we had used our W, then we would have uh, just gotten more attacks. We'd kill him a bit faster. There, I was thinning out the wave. If I didn't thin it out, it would crash underneath her turret, and still it might crash before she gets there. I left it with Set having more minions. We can get a full stride rate. This is a really early first item. Pre-10 minute full item. That's really spicy. We're at 82 CS. They're going to get Dragon. I'm not too worried about it. Sure, like, it's annoying because Belveth gets her Lavender. But Dragon Lavender only lasts like a minute. So it's not the end of the world. We're going to go ahead and max E second because damage per level is insane on it. You only get W level 2 because the passive attack speed is just so good. But per level, the attack speed barely goes up. I'll hit him with a Q, but I can't do much else. Exhaust is still an option on Nocturne. I feel like Ignite's more important though, like with all the heal cut items being nerfed. Even though Ignite did also get nerfed, it makes it to where you don't have to invest in a heal cut item. Even if they have like a Mundo, because you'll just ignite them every time. So, because the heal cut items are like worse than they've ever been by a long shot. So, they feel really bad to rush in your first three full items because you're just hurting yourself so bad with it. We're having that ignite true damage plus the heal cut it 
it instantly applies is just really nice. R is about to be up, so we're starting to look, especially since our camps are down. It's all about your R. We see top lane is, it's looking doable. We'll head over there. But first, I'm going to scout out this area. Ooh, hey, Belveth. We get our fear on her. I block her thing. We red smite her. We ignite her. We would have killed her without Zerath for sure. It's a little unfortunate he got the kill there. I'm not close enough for him. Yeah, he's going to run away. I have completed item advantage, so he definitely can't solo me. He may not know that though. A lot of people don't check items very const very consistently, so he's like, oh, I'm equal level or higher level or whatever. He might try to do something dumb. We need to use our stride break on him. That was a... Oh, that was a really bad W on my part. That was unfortunate. I'm gonna red smite him. Stride break. If I had done a good W, he would have gotten wrecked so hard. Here, I don't want to steal the minion, so I need to like let her get it. I'm just pushing it down for her now. She can get more plates. I'm not gonna bother staying for plates because I don't have any mana. I shouldn't be prolonging my back. Now, if it was a race for first turret, they're on our turret. They're about to get insurance stay. All right, we're gonna to wanna to go for Death Stance here. Get the call field. Yeah, we'll get call fields first because it gives ability haste. I really shouldn't have two control words. That was a mistake. Having two on you at once is pretty pointless. Since I couldn't buy anything else, it, it's kind of is what it is, but still. All right, she's not a full item, plus she's Merc Treads. We beat her. She has the wrong stuff to fight me. Ugh. Pike's here, though. Question is, is how long is he going to be here for? She actually thinks she wins that. I, d I don't even know if my fear pulled her out of her channel. That, that seems like a really weird bug. Whenever you hard CC her, it's supposed to pull her out of that little gunfire channel she does. She has damage reduction in it, and she does basically more damage, and it's also execute damage. So if you're below 30% health, it absolutely chunks. Auto attack, stride break. You can use stride break without even stopping your movement and you can use it in midair as well. Basically the stride breaker is there for you to be able to land your fear. We hit him with stride breaker in midair. So now we land our fear. We got a good W off as well. Got him underneath the turret, dodge the true damage, auto attack, Q, walk him down. Look how one side of that fight was. And when you look at gold spent, we're very similar. Like we, we didn't even lose half our health. Before that fight, he had three kills. I had uh, four as a comparison. On, so it's like the, the damage is definitely legit. It's not just like, oh, fed Nocturne gets a kill. It's like, no, the, the damage is actually really nice. That's coming from someone who's played like a lot of Zin Zhao, Jarvan, Kha'Zix. It feels really, really good. It mainly comes from this, the 30% bonus, just constant attack speed from your W passive. Plus, since he hit me with an ability when I clicked my W, I had a total of 60% bonus attack speed. 60% bonus attack speed is like two completed attack speed items. It's an incredible amount of attack speed. She shouldn't try to last hit that from me. She doesn't get as much XP from it. We didn't block an ability because he didn't use one on us. Got to get off a good fear on him. Stride break E, Q, ignite. What? Come on, Fiora. Don't do me like that. <laughs> what the heck? What are you doing, my guy? We could take a lot here if teammates stay. I don't know if they're really thinking about it, though. Yeah, they weren't thinking about it. We could, we could probably dig the next turret. The enemy bot lane didn't rotate and their jungle and top lane were dead, so. Oh, cool. I'm tanking turret. That's neat. We don't want to take inhib this early, though, is the thing. Taking inhib this early would be a colossal mistake. Oh, wow. He used his R to get out of that. Oh, uh, yeah. I just can't win that fight. 
I don't have my gold spent, and I also got ignited twice, apparently. <laughs> Couldn't heal off my conk. Conk could only do so much for us. Go ahead, get Death's Dance next. After Death's Dance, their team is mostly physical, so we would go for GA. Basically, GA Dead Man, Sterix. I do like Axiom Arc. I feel like it's a little bit. Like, it's good, but it's not quite good enough, type of thing. Like, with a slight item tweak, I feel like it would be a lot more worth building it than it is right now. I feel like it's almost more for just Assassin Nocturne. Just need to get a little bit closer, please. I don't have vision. There we go. Stride Break E. I needed a W sooner. That's my bad. If I had W'd her CC, I would have been able to kill her before my teammate died. That's on me. At this point, you're fed. You can find opportunities to invade. Like here, their jungler's dead, but most of their team's missing, so it's a little sketchy. Plus, my R is on cooldown, so is my Ignite, so I'm not a huge fan of that right now. So instead, I'm going to just farm. And I would take Dragon if it was up, or Herald if it was up, since one of their teammates is dead right now. It's a lot safer. But uh, it's not, so we're just chilling. I'm going to path towards this. He's up, come pathing towards our turret. You can use your Stride Breaker while you're farming. It actually does decent damage right now. Well, I take it back. It's less damage than an auto attack. It's not quite as good <laughs> in terms of damage output as I thought. Still useful, though. It's very, very low cooldown. About 10 seconds right now. Our R is on a 71 second cooldown, so a little over a minute. Q is 5, W is 14, E is 8-ish. Oh, yeah, I blocked it. He's dead. Yeah, everyone's going to die. Well, all right. Just turn on this chick, stride break. Oh, that was weird. That was such a weird interaction. Oh my goodness, that was so strange. I got R, but Seth's R like pulled me out of the barred R. Moving between our autos, down he goes. It's so hard to get away from stride break nocturne. It really is. I I really do think, like without a doubt. Nocturne jungle with this build is top three best jungler for beginners because his clear is so simple his play style full clear gank full clear gank Full clear gank you get the picture such a straightforward champion The biggest issue beginners and noobs run into on him is essentially just building the wrong items Like you fall into the trap of oh, I want to build assassin on him, but no one's squishy enough to really get one shot. Simultaneously, you can't kill tanks or bruisers if you're Assassin Nocturne. Stride break. Down he goes. I feel like items are just too strong, man. Like, Stride Breaker's an AoE, like, Nasus Wither. Does that really need to be in the game? Probably not. Bonk. Give me that. Oh, okay. It is there. That was weird. To, for me, it showed like it wasn't there for a second. We're getting our mana back really fast since we're in the jungle. I'll back up Zurath here. Oh, it's worded. They're not going to chase now. I could definitely look for a reset here. Yeah, nice try, buddy. I don't know if I actually want to because I think Belvest's in the area. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I didn't realize how fed Belveth was. That was my mistake. That same thing I was talking about, what happened top lane. When Set wasn't respecting my item advantage. Apparently, Belveth has as many kills as me. Additionally, with shutdown, since our team's more fed, everyone on my team's basically going to have shutdowns on them. So, she, she was two completed items plus tier two boots. I'm only two completed items and tier ones. It's like me fighting there. Even though I'm really strong, she's just as... She's just as strong in terms of damage output, even though she's not as tanky, but she does the same amount of damage. I ate a bunch of true damage. 1100. I, I took more true damage than anything else. Alrighty. Gonna go and get those bad boys. And at this point, kind of want more HP. 
GA would be good, but yeah, I guess we'll get GA. GA is just so good. If they had a tank, I would definitely go Black Cleaver. If they had an Orn, Ramus, Malphite, Scion, that type of thing, Leona. They just don't have anyone really building armor. The closest thing is that plate is still cast, but that's not really enough to justify it. a Black Cleaver right now. They lost double inhibs. We should definitely push for Baron then. Like I'm on the wrong side of the map. That's the that's the uh, clearest play. Once you have them crippled in base, you need to take Baron or at least force them to push out. Even if you don't take it, they'll, they'll lose more of their base. So it's a lose-lose for them. They essentially just need to give it. You can block uh, the Baron special attacks with your W to get bonus ad additional attack speed. You can also block the dragon autos with your W. Though you need to see the Baron attack coming though. So there I blocked it and it's see I get the bonus attack speed. It only matters so much though against Baron since I'm the one tanking it. I'm doing 50% reduced damage. So it only matters for so much. You normally wouldn't want to do that against Baron. Just in case an, if an enemy shows up type of thing. We're going to W. It's really hard for Pike to get away from Nocturne because we stride break. We block his stun and he just really can't do anything. Hey, buddy. My conk's fully stacked, so I'm going to eat these kids up. Got my W on. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm so low. Thank goodness. <laughs> Stinx is so far behind. Yeah, she's one full item. If we were Assassin Doctrine, we'd have like five different times there. I'm really, really happy with this build. I can see why it's his highest win rate build right now. Woo-wee. All right, let's take a look at the graphs. I have a feeling we are top two most damage dealt. Top, probably most damage taken. Let's see. Looking at damage ultimate champions, we were the number one. Extremely happy with that. For damage taken, we were technically, we were number two. I'm not going to say technically because if we look at self-mitigated. Yep. Self-mitigated makes a difference. 5k differential between me and her. So if you add 5k to damage taken, we were technically the most. But still, she took a lot of damage. Looking at runes, we got extremely high value. I wish it would tell you how much bonus damage Conquer had you do through your autos and abilities. It just doesn't. It would be really nice to see that. This is just healing alone. Super high value, especially considering heal cut's been nerfed so much in the past couple of patches. I think that was a big buff for Conquer. It's harder for them to cut through that type of healing. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this Nocturne Beginners Carry Guide, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.